Just a heads up, the Groove Monkey MIDI giveaway that I promote in this video, it's over, that contest is over. In this video, we'll be starting a full song from scratch in a DAW with Easy Drummer 3. And in the next video, we'll finish the song. This is video number one in a two video series. I'm in Pro Tools, but it doesn't matter what DAW you're in because I'll only be performing simple and basic DAW tasks. I'm Sean from Shooty School, and in this video, I'm celebrating my 10,000th subscriber goal for my YouTube channel. So let's get started. We can create our drum parts at any point in the songwriting process. Today, we'll add them as the last step since a fantastic artist named Steven Paracone has already provided us with the guitar and bass parts for this song. Steve and I have worked together for decades and he's either jamming in Texas or Los Angeles depending on his work. He has a brand new YouTube channel, so if you appreciate his work and contribution or this video, please click on his link in the description and give him a sub. Thank you, Steve. So I'll start a new Pro Tools session. I know Steve recorded at 150 BPMs, so I'll put that in and make sure I'm in grid mode for easy song structure editing. Steven Paracone has given me a verse. It's like a 1-4-5 in C major, and it's all good if you don't know what that is. We have a chorus section. We have a cool turnaround. There's a variation of the verse, which is more like a breakdown. And a guitar solo. All his guitar tracks are either doubled or have two complementing guitar parts, and the bass he provided simply follows with a blues country style. Since there's no vocals, we'll make this structure typical, short and sweet. It will be more like a lead guitar jam track, which I'll later post it as one if you want to jam to it. Let's get started. I requested Steve give me some pre and post roll to all the individual song sections so we can crossfade our parts for proper editing. And I'll simply build my structure out in a linear fashion since this is just fun country rock. It's not progressive music. It should be predictable. I always leave two meshes of free roll at the start of every one of my sessions, and I must say that I'm absolutely diligent with placing markers, so if you don't move as fast as I do when we get Easy Drummer up and running, consider watching my DAW Frustrations with Easy Drummer 3 video. It has received killer positive feedback. I'll place my first marker called Turnaround because I'm starting the song with this great turnaround lick. Let's slap a verse right next to it. Notice I'm putting markers for every section and I will for important notes as well if needed. The chorus is next. I'll put the turnaround lick again after the first chorus because the last time we used the turnaround lick, our listeners heard a verse right after it. So subliminally, they may be expecting a verse again. And if you mess with your listeners subconscious, you may distract them from your song. We're not only composing here, but we're producing as well. And that's a thought that might work for you in your song. Now I want another verse and chorus. Notice my markers are going in so we don't even have to guess where any parts of our song are. We're being efficient by placing markers and saving time by remembering to reference them. So we're basically halfway through our song now. How about instead of a turnaround lick, we bust right into the guitar solo, which was intended to be played over the chorus. So let's double the chorus we just copied and place our guitar solo over the second part of the doubled chorus. Let's listen through the solo and see how we can continue. So when you're in the middle of a song and you blow your load, you can't go up further from there. We've already peaked our energy. So you can either go to the bridge as an interlude, which we don't have a part for, or 
we break it down, which Steve has provided a very cool muted arpeggiated version of the verse to do so with. Now let's get back to the chorus, and since it's the last chorus, let's double it. Completing a very common recipe song structure. And Steve did also provide an outro lick, I'll just plug it in at the end. So here's my song structure. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, verse, the breakdown version, double chorus out. Very typical in a great way. I don't want people to have to focus on where my song is going while they listen. Let's keep it short and predictable. When your song ends, you want replay value. Listen to me on this one, regardless of your opinion on this song structure. This statement should stand on its own. When your song ends, if the user never listens to it ever again, that means it has no replay value and you failed to recruit that person as one of your fans. Don't be writing seven minute long songs with 20 parts like Led Zeppelin, Floyd, Queen, Dream Theater, Metallica. Wait until you're established before you write music that must be first analyzed before enjoyed. People are too busy with too many options to be giving your labyrinth compositions a chance. Think replay value until you get a fan base. Then you can afford to play around. Now that's my opinion, of course, and at the end of the day, you should be happy in doing your thing, but consider what I've just said. Let's get Easy Drummer up. I want to use the Gospel Easy X. This is my first project I've ever used it for. It has a polished but not overproduced sound in my opinion. As I've taught in my drums tab video, which you should watch, I will find the user preset first for good reason. I'll use basic golden age. I will unload every kit piece that I'm not using, not only to save resources, but to simply not get distracted by them. Now here's a power tip. So Wake up for a sec, okay? In the grid editor, all of the instruments I unloaded on the drums tab are grayed out. I want them out of my line of sight, so I'll drag them all downwards. Now, I will almost never have to scroll downwards or vertically in the grid editor, a super time and stress saver. My unused instruments will not distract me and my grid editor layout is way less crowded. Now we're ready to start composing our drum track and continue producing our song. But first, please allow me to talk about Shitty School since I've been waiting to achieve my 10,000 subscriber goal for a long time now. Almost eight years ago, I put out my Easy Guide to Easy Drummer 2 video, and I've been active ever since, more so the past three years. Shooty School has never made a profit. Not until last year did I finally start asking for donations in my videos, and these fine gentlemen responded in 2021. Thank you so much for your contribution. The revenue I get from ads on my videos is chump change that barely adds up for the amount of views I get. I don't have videos with a million views on it. They don't rake in the money at all. Now I ask for donations in almost every single video simply because I value my own effort. And so far in 2022, these gentlemen responded with their contributions. Thank you so much for your contributions. This will be the first year that I break even, not on Shooty School as a whole, that, that may never happen, but on my web presence expenses, which is a super inconvenient bill that will be completely paid off this year due to your donations. If I ever made your day or brought your skills to the next level, do consider contributing to me. The links are in the description. So adding to the good vibes, I've been chatting with Russ from Groove Monkey for a bit now, and he has been so kind as to let me give away seven drum or bass Groove Monkey MIDI packs. They all work flawlessly in Easy Drummer or Easy Bass. All you have to do is comment Groove Monkey, spell correctly in the comments, and make sure you subscribe to my channel and enable notifications to win. I'm not sponsored by Groove Monkey. We've just been collaborating for the sake of hooking up you, my subscribers. So thank you so much, Russ. Hope to keep working working with you in the future. 
With GrooveMonkey in mind, let's test out some of their stuff for this country rock track. Even though I have all of Russ's products right here, let me re-import just the GrooveMonkey Southern Rock Drum MIDI Pack so you can see how easy it is to implement their products. And we'll build our song out from there. I'll go to Options, User MIDI and Linked Folders, and click on Add Linked Folder. After I've bought and downloaded the drum MIDI from GrooveMonkey, I store it somewhere on my computer, wherever it's convenient for you, wherever it's convenient for me. So I'll simply find that location and add it in this dialog. It's that simple. Now we see it here under linked folders and can start working with it right away. There's many ways to audition and search for beats. We will use a particular method today because I want the same drummer for my entire song and I want to choose from a collection of songs that he recorded. We're using that Southern Rock MIDI pack. The drummer for this pack is Rory Fashion. I'll link to him in the description. Since our song has a straight feel, not a shuffle or triplet feel, the moment I sense hearing any triplets, I'll skip that song to save time. I I will also not waste my time with super slow tempos since the power hand and fills don't typically work right away without some tweaking. We're working in a fast tempo. No need to go through songs that are twice as slow. You know, it just they just feel different. Acknowledging this stuff up front can save you time sorting large amounts of MIDI. Take note if you haven't yet. And here's a power tip for auditioning beats in a DAW. I will mock up a few measures of my verse and chorus. I'll just jam them right together. And so I can get a vibe of the main sections of my song and I'll loop them. What is absolutely fantastic about playing MIDI out of the grooves tab is it will sync in time, regardless of where in the loop my DAW is playing. A lightning fast workflow that you'll see and hear. Now before I get started, let me just audition a couple basic grooves. So this drummer's hitting is too heavy handed for this sound, the Gospel Easy X, and that's not a big problem. If I took the, uh, a tune track Metal Easy X drummer and took his MIDI and his performance data and applied it to the sounds of the Blues Easy X sounds, it's going to sound off as well. We're mixing drummers with sounds that you know they weren't intended for. So instead of me just saying, I like this beat, let me drag it down here. I'm going to have a lot of velocity editing to do later if that's my workflow. So I want to nip it in the butt right now. I'm going to undo that. So let's use the global velocity slider and get the dynamics at least ballparked to where I want them before I start committing them to the song track and get the majority of velocity editing out of the way up front. Negative 28 sounds good to me. Let me try one more beat. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, so let me just dive in. I'm using the down arrow on my keyboard to switch beats. It's a, actually a decent fill. Let me get organized down here on the song track. Ah, I like that hard bell. Maybe this is good for the solo. That might be a good solo lick. Um, so if, if I already know what part I want the MIDI block to be, I might as well assign it right now while I'm thinking of it so I don't have to do twice the amount of work later. I don't wanna to have to do the labor twice. So this is probably gonna be a solo. You know, this might work for that breakdown verse as well. That might be the chorus right there. Oh, and it's already a chorus part, good. Well, that might be my verse right there. Let me put the, this verse over here so I remember I'm liking it more than the others. All right, I'm about done. I do have a bunch of fills over here and two 
chorus options. I've got what I think will work for the solo. I think this will be the verse. Here's some verse options before I build out this song structure and then start editing and producing these beats. Let me just set up a little bit of a foundation. I'm on track one of Easy Drummer. If I right click on it and rename it, I'll select put Boneyard. If you ever played uh, Dominoes, um, a Boneyard is where you pull fresh dominoes from. Well, this is the song track where I will pull my fresh beats from. And on this track, I'll rename this what Swamp Country. Let's name the song Swamp Country because everybody always calls Steve Paracone Swamp. It's a fantastic uh, southern nickname for him. So Swamp Country is where I'll build my song. The Boneyard is where I'll pull my beats from. Tune into my next video where we'll produce all of the beats and fills that we sorted today and get them to marry and complement all of Stephen Paracone's song parts. Check out the Facebook and Discord groups for like-minded communities. And if you don't like how we sorted for beats today, check out my channel for the song creator and bandmate features. I have many videos on both of those and both of those features utilize the Easy Drummer 3's AI to help you find the right beats for your projects. Rock on!